Today we're going to show you how to use the stopwatch feature in MPLAB X. We have here a simple program written up to show you how stopwatch works. First, let's open up stopwatch. Go to File, Project Properties, Configuration. Ensure that Simulator is selected under Hardware tool. Next, we want to set up the clock frequency to match our device. OK, now let's play with some code. Build your project and then hit debug. Your project is going to automatically execute since we haven't set any breakpoints yet. What you want to do is pause it, then reset it. In the stopwatch window, you can clear the timer. Let's step through the code. You can do that by clicking the step into button in the toolbar. As you can see, the stopwatch logs how many clock cycles have passed since the last pause. You will notice that not all instructions take one cycle. Some take two cycles and some depend on a condition. For example, the call instruction always takes two cycles to execute. The no operation instruction always takes one cycle. The decrement f skip if zero instruction takes one cycle, unless f is zero, in which case it takes two cycles. The branch instruction always takes two cycles. If we want to count the number of cycles for some snippet of code, we can clear the stopwatch and continue stepping through. Another useful thing you can do with the stopwatch is measure how many clock cycles elapse to the next breakpoint. This is useful when you have long timer loops that would take a long time to step through. If we analyze our delay loop with the stopwatch, it will reveal that the subroutine runs a total of 261,125 instruction cycles. One thing to keep in mind is the reset on run option. When active, if you hit the green continue button, the stopwatch will reset the timer from the current instruction. Okay, let's have some fun with stopwatch. Let's clear the stopwatch first. I'm going to go down here and change these counters to be set to 5 rather than 255 to make this a little bit easier and faster. Now I'm going to stop this, rebuild the project, debug one more time. Now here we are at the beginning of the call instruction for the delay subroutine, this one right here, uh, and it says here Stopwatch is telling us that so far eight clock cycles have occurred up to this point from the start of the program. So now let's step into the subroutine. So the call instruction took two cycles. Here we can see it went from eight to ten. And now let's continue stepping through. The no op takes one. Now this decrement file register skip if zero instruction basically usually takes one clock cycle but in the odd case where count two is a zero so it, dec it get decremented from a one to a zero and now that it's a zero it's going to take two clock cycles because it's going to increment the program counter by two rather than one and that case takes an extra clock cycle so let's see what happens so here it's taking one took one took one, one, there, see? It went from 31 to 33. That took two clock cycles. And you can see that it skipped over this branch instruction. So now it's going to decrement count one, the other counter, which is set over here. And it resets to count two. So now it's going to go five times one more time. And there, and it's going to do this 
5 times 5 times, so in total 25 times. And you can see up here I've written a small formula to help how to calculate how many clock cycles this subroutine takes based on count 1 and count 2.